Good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and I've enjoyed the, the service thus far and through the presence of the Lord here. And it's so good to be uh, back in the house of the Lord and uh, feel the presence of the Lord and to have the fellowship that we do. We will study some this morning in the book of 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5. We're going to read a little scripture there, and then we're going to go to another place or two and try to uh, uh, see some things about the different times and seasons that we will see uh, uh, during the, the time that we have left and even to the time that we uh, see out into the future there's going to be times and seasons and uh, John wrote to the ch church of Thessalonica and he, he told them that uh, uh, one place where he said you have no need that I write you but uh, we need to we need a need, we have a need to, to, to know uh, what we're looking at, what we're, we're searching for, and what we're seeing going on in our in our life this day and, and through our, our country, because uh, everything is in an upheaval, and uh, we really we don't we don't know how sometimes to even pray, except Lord, Thy will be done. Amen. And uh, that's the that's the main thing is that uh, uh, that we stand for the will of the Lord. So in verse. 1 of chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians, but of the times and seasons, brethren, we have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Amen. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So we look back in chapter 5, verse 1, he says here, but the times Notice it's plural, times and seasons. So there's going to be more than one time. There's going to be more than one season Amen. of things that we need to watch for, that we need to understand when it happens. And so we need to be prepared for it. And the best way to be prepared is to be prayed, uh, prayed up and, 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 and trying to serve the Lord. And the, and the Holy Spirit will reveal these things to us. And we can kind of be uh, prepared for them because... We see it right now, things that are happening, things that are completely turning over and changing even in our country this morning. And uh, so many things that are uh, not normal are happening. Uh, even this morning, I think Diane was reading something about the California and the animals. And uh, they don't want to have no more uh, killing of the hogs and the cattle and all this stuff. They say it's cruelty. So, but anyway, that's that's something that uh, you know that God put here on this earth, and He said that He seen it was good, and He made it for mankind to to grow and to feast upon. And so we know that they're wrong in in, in, in looking at these things this way. But He says here, "You have no need that I write unto you." And so we know this morning from the study of God's Word, and even in the in the, the last book that tells the whole thing, and we win, but the thing that we see here is that we know that there's different th things that's fixing to happen and come, and it will happen, and it will come because the, the Bible says it will, and John uh, saw these things, and he uh, understood a lot of them and uh, he wrote them down so he says you have no need that I write unto you but this morning and don't give us no cause to to fold the, the Bible up and say well hey I don't have no need to know because listen uh, you have a need to know Amen. and you need the need of your life is to study this Bible daily and to uh, pray daily because, listen, that's where you get all your uh, uh, butter and, and bread from, and that's where you get all your food from. And listen, that's that's what that you can rely on, and you need to be much in prayer for this. So he says here that you have no need that I write unto you. So evidently he's saying, hey, you already know what's going on, but I'm going to write to you anyway and remind you of this thing. And this is something this morning that we as God's people need is a reminding of the things that are in the book of the Bible that we can read and the things that are going on out in the world today because the things, the actions that are out in the world we can point to them and say, hey, that sounds like this, that sounds like this, and this could be this. And listen, we 
we don't know for sure, but we do know this, that things are not going to get no better. Amen. And things are getting worse. And so he says here, you, you, you already know about these things, but I'm going to write to you anyway. For he said in verse 2, For yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And so many people this day and time uh, don't understand what he's saying here when he says comes as a thief in the night. And this is, this is one of the things that I think that he's talking about in the times of the season. He's going to come as a thief in the night, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is going to uh, he is going to be here, and we are going to be taken out in, in, a, in a, a twinkling of an eye to be with him. And so we understand these things, but there's so many people this morning, and, and it's like Brother Larry was talking about this morning about uh, the the fact that so many people don't know what's going on in the world. They don't understand what what that they're saying. And they, they see this word thief and they think about Jesus Christ as a thief. But listen, people, this morning, we as God's people need to have a desire to tell these people and to inform them if we have the opportunity. And, and I, I, I'll tell you this morning, if we do pray and ask the Lord to help us with these things, He will give us an opportunity. And Amen. so it may not be it may not be exactly how you how you want it, but listen, when it's all said and done, you can look back and say, Well, that's the opportunity. That's what I prayed for. And so here we see he said here in in uh, in this verse two for yourself, for yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And we're going to be uh, hopefully all of us here that are, are in this building today uh, through the grace of God we will be ready when, uh, when he says come up hither but still all in all we need to pray for one another and if there be uh, things that we don't understand we need to, we need to understand them because he says for when they shall say peace and safety and uh, you know we have got through a, a time in this country that we had some peace and uh, uh, the United States was strong enough to send, stand off some of these but listen our country is not like it used to be Amen. and uh, it's not as strong as it used to be because that our president and them are, are directing the, the, the country in a different right way from what the former president did and, and to me it's made it weaker and so this is one of the, the things the times that we can think about when our country gets weaker because when it gets weak and uh, they start rolling out these billions and billions of dollars and your money has not got no value to it listen there's something got going to take place and exactly. and you won't have no no way to buy nothing or, or sell nothing because money ain't no, no value but here for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail on a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And this sudden de sudden destruction is just like the as he as he says here in in, 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 the, in the Bible here, it's like the pain uh, of a woman that's expecting her child. It's all sudden and all quick, and it's going to be the same way when Jesus appears and says, "Come up hither." It's going to be that way, and it's going to be in the twinkling of an eye. We're going to be gone. And then those that are here are going to remain here, and they're going to go through a, a tribulation period. Amen. And so we need, to, we, need to, we need to think upon these things and, and to warn people if we have the opportunity and to tell them the, these things. But he said here in verse 4, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. And so... He said to the brethren, and I believe this morning that all of our brethren and sisters here are not, uh, they're not ignorant about this thing of, of Christ's coming. And, and they, we don't know the, end, the time, but we do know this, that he said he would return and he will Amen. return. And Amen. You, can, you, can, you can understand that. And so... When we know that something is going to happen, if we know a force is going to come towards us, or if we like a storm last night, listen, we need to prepare for it. And, and, and that's the same way with, with Jesus when he comes back and, and calls us out. We need to be ready 
and we need to have gotten others uh, informed about this so if they're not ready, they'll know what has happened because listen, there's going to be something or another that the Antichrist will, will substitute for this uh, catching away and he'll say that's what happened. It, it was all them old uh, no good folks that uh, was uh, mean on the earth and not serving God and they're gone. And so there's something going to happen because, listen, there's going to be too many people left here. Uh, there's not going to be that many that's going to be raptured. You're right. Because, and it's going to be that many. So uh, it won't be too hard for the devil to do that because he, he's got his television he can use. <laughs> but he said here, uh, ye are, in verse 5, ye are all the children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Amen. And so here he's he's telling us this thing about day and dark, night and he's just indicating to us this morning that we are in the light, that we uh, understand Jesus Christ and what he done for us, but the darkness is those that are in darkness and cannot see what kind of condition they're in. So he says, therefore, let us not sleep as do others. And the first I was thinking about this as I was reading this, you know, over in Matthew 25, I believe it is, that uh, the uh, bridegroom, while he tarried, the virgin slept. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and I'm sure that this scripture was put in there to warn us of the condition that we're going to be in. And you know, even as Jesus was uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane and he told his disciples, he said, you go yonder and pray and I'm going to stay here. Well, when he when he got through, he went over there and he found them asleep. And right. so it's natural. It's, it's, it's a thing that's going to happen. People are going to get drowsy. People are going to get bored. Uh, people are going to get to lose the desire to turn uh, to, uh, to attend church. Mm -hmm. They're just going to they're just going to phase out and, and sit at home and say, "Well, I can watch television and do just as much." But listen, that's not right. Amen. And, and so be aware of these things that that are happening because he says, "Let us there, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober." And so. Uh, you know uh, the the Passover. You know in, in in this here. Let us watch the Passover when it happened. Uh, they were told, listen, you get in your house and you stay there and don't you come out. And listen, that's what that's what we need to do is is be not not to close ourselves up, but to be watchful and to expect something to happen because. It's going to happen. And, uh, you know, all of those that were not ready, that had the blood over the door, they died. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the same way here this morning when Jesus Christ comes back and says, come up hither, he's going to take us out. We're going to be like the, they were in the house and he's going to let the world, they're going to be dead. They're going to, they're, they're, they're going to serve the devil and uh, that's, that's, their, that's their place. So he said, but let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. And so he's talking about the darkness and that he's talked about up here earlier about the light and the dark. For they that sleep, sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and Amen. love. Very important. Very important, the breastplate. And you know, that's what was the one of the main things that the uh, warriors used to wear was a breastplate. And that's it, it, just regarding the heart and, and all this. But listen, that is our that is our assurance that, that we will not be uh, caught in the darkness is that we have our breastplate on and we're trying to serve the Lord. But he said here, for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, he is we that are we that are here, he's not appointed us to wrath, 
But listen, we that have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and He's called us unto Him, listen, uh, it's, it's the hope of our salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. Now, we as, as Christians, it says here, wherefore, comfort yourselves together. Now, we couldn't do that if we're sitting at home watching the television and watching some preacher that probably was telling us something false. But listen, this, that's one of the gathering, that's, that's one purpose of the gathering is to comfort one another. Amen. One may have this problem and one may have this problem and they can come together and, and talk about it and one can uh, say to the other one, hey, uh, let me try this to you or tell you this or, and I'm going to be praying for you. Mm -hmm. And listen, uh, if, you take, if you take your brother and, and sisters uh, seriously, you know when their prayer time comes that they're, they're calling on God to help you in your time of problem. And so he says here, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify or build up one another, even as also you do. And so this is a good thing to do. Paul, and then in verse 12, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And so he said, We beg you, uh, brethren, to know them which labor among you. Amen. And listen, that don't just I mean it's not altogether the pastor that labors which he does and he's responsible for the church but we have each other in in the church that labors mm -hmm. and, and ever everyone everyone here has got something to do with the church continuing on it's, it, there's, mm -hmm. it, it, it may be mopping the floors it may be uh, cooking a meal it may be cleaning the windows or it may just be sitting down and praying but listen, we've all got a job to do, and we do it. And he says here, uh, and we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you and the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. And so uh, really, uh, again, here we need to uh, pray for our pastor. Uh, I mean, continuously, Amen. because he's the one that God has called and set in this in this church as our leader, and he's the one that makes the decisions and makes the uh, recommendations to the church uh, and guides the church and is the leader of the church. And so, it's very important this morning that we uh, follow him, we pray for him, and we honor him and bring him before the Lord and pray for him because he's the leader and, and, and you if if he gets out if he gets pushed out of the way and we don't have no leader then you know what goes we go astray mm -hmm. because you gotta have a leader uh, and to have uh togetherness. So remember these things that we that we're saying and we're reading to you. Uh now in verse 14 we exhort that you brethren warn them that are unruly Comfort the weak, or comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient towards all men. And that's that's a big, big, big mouthful. There. That's something this morning that uh, you know. Even uh, comfort the feeble-minded. Sometimes you know those that are feeble-minded. They say things that uh, they don't understand what they're saying. They say. Uh, uh, what was that all about, or, you know, or, or trying, they can't remember, and, and things of this nature. But we are not to fly off the handle at them and say, yeah, you know, but just comfort them and help them because, listen, that's, that's what the Lord Jesus Christ done for us. He comforted us. He, uh, we were, we were astray. And he come and comforted us right. through the Holy Spirit. And so this feeble-minded is, is something that uh, we we should practice and, and support the weak, which are those that 
those that are weak or those that are, are one thing not educated and cannot uh, understand the Bible and for that we can explain it to them and, and uh, if we can't explain it to them we'll find somebody else that, that can help us to help them and here he says uh, here uh, the unruly uh, we have we have people uh, in this country that are unruly and uh, they're, they're they're growing by bounds and we need to we need to help them if we can and, and not not to glory in their works and say, oh, when I was young, I did that too. That's the wrong attitude. But to to pray for them and to try to tell them that this is wrong and you shouldn't do it. And if if they if they do something to you like they did to Jesus and, and they, they spit on you or they pull your hair or they uh, mock you or whatever, they curse you, listen. You've done what you can do, so uh, you can go away happy because that you did these things. Now, here again, be patient towards all men, and that's that is that is a big big word. That patience. When you have patience, uh, you 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 got to have it. And you know, uh, this old body that we got don't want to have patience. Right. It does not. It wants everything its way. And the only thing that deters it from being worse is that the Spirit of God, which is in us, talks to it and kind of guides it and uh, kind of keeps it calmed down. But listen, if it, if it wasn't for the if it wasn't for the Spirit of God within us, you'd be like a lost person out there, and they have no they have no feelings, they have no uh, desire to be patient because they haven't got the love of God in them. So here. We see here, see that none remember evil for evil unto the any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Amen. Rejoice evermore. And this rejoicing that he's talking about here is rejoicing in the Lord, rejoicing that you know the Lord, rejoicing that you can tell people about the Lord, rejoicing because you know that you're going to be with him in heaven when you die. Rejoice and just keep rejoicing. And first thing you know, you've got patience. First thing you know, these old ugly thoughts and things like that will leave you because they can't find no place to stay. So rejoice and, and just keep rejoicing because uh, you can rejoice about uh, stumping your toe if you if you if you put your mind to it, people. Mm -hmm. I'm using I'm just exaggerating with the thing of this. We can rejoice over a lot of things that hurt us and still praise the Lord because uh, even witnessing to someone, you sometimes you get your feelings stomped on and hurt, but you can still rejoice because yeah. you followed the Lord. You did what the Lord would have you to do. And when you stand before God, He'll say, uh, well done, thou good and faithful yeah. servant. And nothing, nothing, nothing more important to rejoice about than to hear him say, welcome home, thou good and faithful person, and and, uh, and, and, and and enter thou the joys of heaven. So here again, this uh, rejoice evermore, and then pray without ceasing, and that this morning is something that uh, we cannot do enough of. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, we need to have a prayer on our lips at all times, or in our heart, and listen, trying to praise the Lord and trying to uh, get His leadership because that's that's another another way to rejoice. And then, last of all, in everything, give thanks. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a cup of coffee, a glass of water, uh, if it's a, a slap on the face, mm -hmm. give thanks. Amen. Because uh, it's it's all for the glory of God, and so uh, He gives He gives all this to us and. We need to give thanks for it. And uh, then we might turn around and say, and I want to thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross of Calvary for me. You know? <laughs> so for this is the will of God in Christ, Jesus concerning. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil mm -hmm. and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved 
blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul mm -hmm. writing to the church there, and he said here, uh, be, uh, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, Amen. who also will do it. And so we see here, these are some of the important things that Paul was writing to the church of Thessalonica and uh, some good information here. He said, Brother, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. And I charge you by the Lord that this uh, epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. And so this is what Paul's writing was to the church there. And it's it's good, it's good to uh, read this uh, uh, any time that you have an opportunity because there's so much here that I have not got the uh, ability to, to tell you how great it is, but all I can do is I can tell you what I know and what I think, and it is a wonderful, it's a wonderful chapter to read. And, and uh, so we thank you this morning for letting us stand before you and, and uh, try to read some of God's Word. And we pray that you'd be praying for one another and pray for us. Thank you. Amen.